God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll continue study in the book of Numbers, chapter 22. In our last study, we read down to verse 17. Let me pause to thank you again for joining us. I want you to know that I appreciate you so very much when you take of your valuable time to listen to us. God is blessing this ministry, and I'm grateful to it. Must admit that I have... Uh, uh, miss some, but I thank God that he's given me the strength to do as much as I do. I ask that you pray for us that God will get the glory out of each and everything that we do in our lives. Well, in our last lesson, we read uh, to verse 17. Today, I will read verse 17 again and give you a preface of uh, what had transpired before we go into today's lesson. I'm going to hurry along and hopefully we will get through the rest of this chapter. Uh, if not, we will get as far along as we possibly can. In verse 17, the Bible reads, For I will promote thee to very great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, curse for me this people. Well, let's uh, uh, give a, let me give you just a little preface of what was going on here. Uh, those of you that was with us on the last lesson, you know uh, that uh, this particular king, the king by the name of Balak, uh, sent uh, men down to talk to the prophet, the prophet Balaam, and ask him to come quickly and uh, 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 and curse the children of Israel. Well, what? Uh, why did he want the children of Israel cursed? Uh, he saw firsthand and heard about uh, that they had just went in and uh, uh, and destroyed uh, a land. You have to understand the particular people that they that they fought against. Uh, they came out against them, and Israel won that uh, won those fights uh, and actually took over their land, and they were living uh, in their cities and in their villages. And uh, this particular king saw how great a number that they was. Uh, and what he wanted to do was curse them so that when he went out to battle with them, that he would win or his side would win. Uh, but they sent uh, down to the prophet. And you got to understand a real prophet, a true pop prophet, uh, he has to hear from God. He does not act upon himself and on his own. He hears the word of the Lord and that's what he acts on. And uh, this particular prophet, Balaam, I believe he was a true prophet. He went and consulted the Lord. And, and in consulting the Lord, the Lord told him not to go down. And then uh, the, uh, uh, the king, King Balak, sent another delegation down to talk to, him, talk to them and told him to come quickly. Uh, come quickly and curse this people, talking about the children of Israel. And then he made him promises. I will promote you. Uh, I will promote thee uh, 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 to great honor. And I will do whatever, uh, whatever whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Uh, come therefore, I pray thee, and curse for me, this people. Uh, well, you got to understand a true prophet of God. Uh, he cannot go unless God tells him. Uh, he cannot uh, seek out. If he's a true prophet of God, uh, he's not worried about the riches and not worried about all of the promotions that may come with uh, that title of with uh, uh, with certain promises. Uh, well, you got to get the picture now. Uh, a true prophet hears the word from God. Now, let's read on. Re read verse 18. And Balaam, Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. You have to admire the man for that, saying, I will not go beyond what the Lord will allow me to do or what the Lord would tell me to do, regardless of what you give me. If you give, you give me your whole house full of silver and gold, I can't not go. Well, let's read on in verse 19. Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me. Uh, well, God uh, uh, had spoke to him the first time. The first delegation come. Here the second delegation. He talked to them and said, ask them to tarry another night. He's going to talk to the Lord again. Uh, well, uh, uh, verse 19. Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye with 
uh, here uh, this night that I may know that the Lord, what the Lord will say unto me. In other words, stay again. Now, this is the second time now that he had uh, gotten these men to stay the night uh, while he would go and, and talk to the Lord. Now, verse 20, and God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, if the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, thou shalt do. Uh, get the picture. Uh, uh, this second time, God told him uh, uh, he could rise up and go with them. You could go with them. But uh, when it comes to cursing the children of Israel, in other words, God did not give him some permission to do that. In other words, when it comes to that time, you will say uh, 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 what he says or what God would say. Let me read verse 20. And God came into Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come and call Call thee, rise up uh, and go with them, but yet the, the word which I shall say unto thee, that shall thy do. Verse 21, and Balaam rose up in the morning uh, and saddled his ass and went with the prince princes of Moab. Uh, can you get the picture now? Saddle his ass and now uh, he's going with the princes of, of uh, Moab, going back to where Balak was. Uh, now verse 22, when God's anger was kindled because he went. God's anger was kindled because he went. You might say, well, why, why would God get angry because uh, the prophet went with them when it seemed like in the prior verses that, that uh, uh, he had told him, uh, uh, if they come to thee, uh, then go with the go with uh, them. Uh, well, you got to understand, God had given him a directive the first time. Uh, number one, uh, uh, in dealing with the word of the Lord, when he tells you what to do, uh, th there's no second guessing. You don't even really have to go back and ask him again. He had told him the first time, don't go with them uh, and do not curse this this people. But here he saddled up. You got to understand there's something about uh, even someone that's led of the Lord and God uh, someone that God uses uh, sometime when you're dealing with hirers dealing with kings and especially when they promise you uh, 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 things uh, prestige and power and all these things that uh, you want to appease and you want to be uh, uh, be humble enough to adhere to to the leadership of this world. But number one, you gotta understand that God is our supreme leader. He's over everyone in this world. And if God told you not to go, you should have got that message the first time uh, and not even uh, entreat the Lord again. Uh, 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 now, Balaam rose up and uh, uh, sat his ass and went with the princes of Moab and God's anger was kindled because he went. Uh, and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an, uh, an adversary against him, uh, against the prophet, uh, against the one that, uh, that, that, that God was speaking to, stood up against him. Uh, why? Because he was on his way pursuing uh, to go talk to a man that, wants to, that, that wanted to curse his people, uh, curse the people that he loved. Uh, uh, now uh, he was riding upon his ass uh, and two servants were with him, Balaam riding upon on the ass and don't get don't get uh, 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 all troubled when I say the word ass I'm talking about an animal uh, talking about an animal we would call him a donkey in the day that we live but Balaam was riding on this animal he was riding on this ass uh, and and uh, uh, I'll read 23 here now. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. Uh, well, an angel of the Lord was uh, was there, and he was he was standing against Balaam uh, and the, uh, the those that were going back to where Balak was. Uh, and the the ass saw it. Now, uh, now verse verse 23 that it tells us that. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, uh, and he's. Uh, uh, and his sword drawn in his hand, uh, and the ass turned aside out of the way uh, and went into the field, uh, and Balaam smote the ass uh, to turn her away uh, into the way. Uh, in other words, he was hitting uh, or smiting this ass, uh, and that ass was actually saving his life, or that animal was actually saving his life. Sometimes we're hitting at something that's actually saving our life. Why? This animal saw the angel there, uh, ready to do him harm. And the, the animal 
Elmo was reacting to what he saw and not uh, uh, not according to the commandments of Balaam. Uh, you have to understand God, God can use anything that he wants to. In this particular case, he's using an ass, uh, an animal, uh, to save a prophet's life. And the prophet did not even know that his life was being spared. Uh, the animal could look up and see the, the angel ready to smite him. Uh, and Balaam himself could not see it. Uh, shall we read on in 24? But the angel of the Lord stood <coughs> in the path of the vineyard, uh, a wall being on, on this side uh, and a wall on that side, uh, a wall on either side. Get the picture. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, uh, he thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot uh, against the wall, uh, and he smote her again. Uh, he hit that animal again. He hit her again. Uh, well, uh, uh, and the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place uh, where it was no way to turn neither to the right nor or to the left. Uh, and when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, he fell down under Balaam, uh, and Balaam angled. Balaam's anger was kindled uh, and he smote the ass with the staff. Uh, he began to hit the, uh, the ass uh, with the staff. He began to smite that animal uh, with the staff. Now verse 28, and the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and she said unto him, uh, Balaam, what have I to do with thee uh, that thou hast smitten me these three times? Uh, can you can you imagine uh, God opening uh, opening up the mouth of this animal uh, so that that animal would talk uh, and begin to converse with Balaam? Uh, you got to understand God has many ways to get our uh, get our attention, uh, and God can use anything that He wants to. Uh, you have to understand He's God. Uh, if He want to cause uh, an animal to speak. There's nothing you and I can do about it. Uh, now, I'll read 28 again. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. Uh, and she said unto Balaam, uh, What have I to do with thee, uh, thou, uh, that thou hast smitten me these three times? Uh, well, shall we read? Balaam said unto the ass, uh, Because thou hast mocked me, uh, uh, I would there were a sword in mine hand. Uh, for now, uh, for now would I kill thee. Uh, in other words, Balaam telling, talk, here he is talking to an animal, uh, talking to an ass, talking to a donkey. If I had a, a sword with me, I, I would just kill you. Can you imagine how he's talking to this animal? Uh, and the animal conversed back with him. Uh, well, shall we continue to read? Uh, and the ass said unto Balaam, uh, I uh, am not I thine ass uh, upon which thou hast written ever since I have uh, uh, ever since I was thine this day. He asked him a question. I haven't, in other words, haven't I did what you told me to do? Uh, I, every time you got on me, I went where you told me to go, and I did that as I was supposed to. Uh, was uh, was I ever uh, accustomed to do uh, so unto thee? And he said, nay, uh, all the prophet could say to an animal is no. Uh, in other words, uh, he had to admit that you never, we've never been in this situation before. Uh, and you've never given me reason to question you, uh, question you. Let's read verse 31. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, uh, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, uh, and his sword drawn in his hand, uh, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Uh, well, after that, his, his eyes were opened up. Uh, he could see what that animal was seeing. Uh, he could see what the ass was seeing. Uh, he saw the angels with his sword, uh, sword drawn. Uh, and then you have to understand, uh, he had to bow himself. He had to get out on the earth. Uh, why? Because, number one, he had to bow before God uh, because God was angry with him. Uh, and not only did he have to bow before God, uh, he had to bow in repentance uh, for more than one thing, for smiting 
an ass uh, that was saving his life uh, for going down uh, 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 when God had told him not to. Uh, he had to bow himself down uh, and fell flat on his face. Uh, now verse 32, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Uh, the angel began to talk to him about smiting that ass, uh, about smiting uh, that animal. Uh, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Uh, behold, I went out uh, to withstand thee, uh, because thy what uh, way what is perverse before me. Uh, in other words, uh, your ways are perverse before the Lord. Uh, the angel went to stop him. Uh, the angel went to stay him. Uh, and because of his hard-headedness, and he was on his way, uh, and the angel would have slain him and would have killed him. Uh, but, the ant, but the ass stopped him uh, from proceeding. Uh, the ass stopped him from being killed. Uh, and the angel saying, why are you hitting this animal? Uh, why are you hitting the animal? Uh, verse 32 again, And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because of, uh, of because thy way is, is perverse before me. This is why I'm here, because your way is perverse before me. Uh, let's read verse 33. And the ass saw me uh, and turned from uh, from me these three times. Uh, unless she had turned from me, uh, surely now also uh, I had slain thee uh, and 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 saved her alive. Uh, I would have saved this animal uh, and killed you. Uh, can you get the picture? Well, my time is rapidly coming to a close. Uh, I don't want to bore you with, with such long, long sessions. Uh, so we're going to finish up this chapter uh, in our next meeting. Uh, but remember this angel. Uh, uh, begin the, 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 the animal talked to, uh, talk to Balaam, uh, and then the angel talked to Balaam. Uh, Sometimes it takes extreme measures to get our attention, uh, to let us know that we're going uh, in a wrong direction. And don't get, don't you get yourself uh, all uh, twisted here about things. Uh, Sometimes even the one that God talked to goes in the wrong direction. Uh, Sometimes even the one that God uses uh, goes in the wrong direction uh, for whatever reason it may be. Uh, and you need to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, many times he's saving you when you go through adversity things. Uh, Sometimes he's saving your very, very life uh, when you go through, through some things that are not pleasing to you. Uh, and here you are, smiting an animal. Uh, here you are, trying to get uh, or hurt someone uh, that is saving your life. Uh, well, you need to say, thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, even for those that you sent in my life to protect me. Uh, even if it's just a little small animal. Uh, even if, it, if, if, if it's a beast of burden. Uh, regardless of what the case may be. Uh, Sometimes God will use them. Uh, he can use them uh, to save your life. Uh, and when you come to that realization, uh, you ought to thank God uh, that he used something so menial, uh, or something that someone would say is nothing, uh, to save your life. Uh, I want you to know that I thank God every day of my life uh, for the support groups that he put around me. Uh, I thank God every day of my life, uh, even if something small, a small child says, says something to me uh, that I can get and grasp uh, and grow by. Uh, I want you to know God is so real. Uh, he can use anything. Uh, he can use anything. Anybody, uh, he can use any situation uh, to get your attention. Uh, well, I want you to know that I love you, my friends. Uh, I love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, if you would like to talk to me for any reason, uh, you can write me at the Word with Chester Ministries, uh, Post Office Box 2006. 03, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, remember, I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.